I'm going to shift gears considerably and take you away from, our, from the fine technical presentation we heard there and tell you more about strategy and business models and what we're doing um, at Peter's Pharma. So the title of my talk is Drug Discovery R&D at the Technology Business Incubator at the University of Hyderabad. I'll take you through a brief background of the, what is going on in the global pharmaceutical industry today in terms of R&D productivity. And then I'll tell you about the Department of Science and Technology, Technology Business Incubator and the University of Hyderabad initiative and partnership. Uh, this is where Vitas Pharma, my company, is located. I'll take you through the goals and strategy of the company, our operational and business model, and end uh, with some salient features of our model. So, you know all of this, the global pharmaceutical industry has faced significant challenges in terms of R&D productivity in the last decade. The collective R&D spend of the industry is at about 50 billion, but the number of truly innovative medicines emerging from these investments has, has remained small. And this has necessitated a rethinking of business models in the industry the world over. So if you look at total average costs uh, spanning from the 70s until the 2000s, you'll see that costs have risen almost tenfold. And a breakup of the cost tells you that a significant portion of that increase is due to the increase in cost of clinical development. And this is because we work in a more stringent regulatory environment which requires larger patient numbers and uh, for establishing safety and efficacy. So if you look at this chart here of R&D spend versus the number of FDA approvals, you see that while the spend is increasing exponentially and hovering around 50 billion right now uh, globally, uh, the number of FDA approvals is between 10 and 20 and has remained stagnant uh, over the last two decades. A close look at uh, 2010 FDA approvals uh, will tell you that there were 15 NCEs approved six NBEs approved and a handful of vaccines. And of these, the potential billion dollar drugs are listed here. Uh, three or so new, uh, new molecular entities, three NBEs, a couple of vaccines. And Pfizer with three new drugs approved by the FDA emerged as the most successful company in 2010. Uh, an analysis of FDA's uh, approval record will tell you that they issued more rejections and more complete response letters in 2010 than new drug approvals. And in fact, the chances of a successful NDA or a BLA after completion of phase three clinical trials was down to 60% from earlier years of, uh, where the probability was around 75%. If you look at this picture here, uh, what you can see is that for every compound, for every compound that emerges successfully through the FDA approval, you start off with, 20, with about 10,000 compounds, and through successive stages, you see attrition until you get to one compound. This happens over a period of maybe 10 to 15 years. But more importantly, I'd like, you draw, like to draw your attention to the bottom bar. The preclinical drug discovery efforts are about 100 million or so in cost. The large part of the cost, 800 million and higher now, comes from clinical development. So if you do this part right and progress the right compound into the clinic, you save yourself a lot of wasted uh, resources and effort. Given this scenario, what are the strategies for sustainable R&D in the industry today? Well, a number of different strategies are being tested and tried, and I've listed some of them. Diversification of risk. You may be an innovator company, but then you may decide that you should diversify and get into generics, biosimilars, branded formulations. Uh, you might get into product diversification with life cycle management, or for drug development, etc. A more radical approach is to completely close internal drug discovery because it's not effective, but in turn support boutique R&D uh, in licensing, acquisitions, etc. For those who wish to stay in R&D, really the choice is to really operate in a focused and cost-effective manner where there is a complete integration of clinical and commercial strategy. So you focus on areas of unmet medical need where there's a commercial opportunity. Then you devise a process where decision-making is very, very clear and stringent. And you use de-risking technologies intelligently, such as surrogate markers, neuroimaging, etc. So you can get to early kills or early proof of concept. And, and of course, a key part of the strategy is to balance the portfolio. And what do I mean by that? 
If you're an innovator company, you might be working on completely novel and pioneer mechanisms. These are high-risk projects, both from a development point of view as well as an innovation point of view. Then you may choose to be a fast follower, meaning that there's already a compound in phase one or phase two, and you choose to analog the compound. You still have a development risk because the lead compound has not made it to the market yet. Then you may be a me too, which means that you're following a compound that has already shown proof of concept. Your risk is lower, your innovation risk as well as your development risk is lower, but your profitability might be lower too big because of, your because of a reduced market share. And then finally, you might get into life cycle management. You have a product, you reformulate it, your innovation risk is still high, but your development risk is low. So at Vita Swama, um, what we have done is that we have chosen to spread ourselves across the quadrants to balance our risk. So Vitas Pharma is a drug discovery and development company. We are based right here in Hyderabad. The company has a unique model to address the constraints of development resources and finances faced by many pharmaceutical companies. And some of the key components of this are that we are uh, based at the Technology Business Incubator, which is a partnership with the University of Hyderabad and the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. We have a strong therapeutic area focus to really leverage the expertise of the team. We have a business model to enable fast commercialization, and we have a process which is uh, a, a, very, a, a very strong process of value-added decision-making. And our goal ultimately is to generate multiple high-quality projects in the pipeline with faster than benchmark times to market. So the Technology Business Incubator, I just want to tell you a little bit about it, uh, is an amazing initiative of the Department of Science and Technology and the University. Uh, in fact, DST has set up about 42 incubators across the country, and this is to enable integration of innovation and market need and to provide R&D, to provide support to R&D companies for sufficient duration to allow confirmation of their hypothesis and commercialization. So the way DST visualizes this model is that they're integrators between innovation and the market need, and the way that this happens is through business incubation and uh, enabling uh, companies to uh, become uh, profitable. So TBI objectives, like I said, um, creation of technology-based new enterprises, but also facilitating technology transfer, fostering the entrepreneurial spirit, uh, uh, enabling speedy commercialization of R&D output. So how do they do this? Well, the TBIs are typically located around R&D institutions or ac academic organizations which have a strong track record of R&D and a mechanism for subsequent commercialization of R&D output. So by being on, an, uh, on, an ins on a campus where there is already a track record of R&D and research, uh, the TBIs uh, ensure optimal utilization of resources and also lower the cost of setting up the TBI. And other things include, you know, that the, uh, that, that the TBI has to be in a, in a place where there's an industrial milieu like Hyderabad, infrastructure facilities, expertise. And finally, very importantly, um, the requirement is for a strong and committed host institution. TBIs are um, judged or they're, they're there are a number of performance parameters that DSD outlines, including the number of businesses graduating successfully, um, the number of technologies commercialized, return on investment, number of new jobs created. So in summary, what's going on is that with, with this collaboration and partnership, what we bring to the table is dedicated resources to support four research programs at a time. We are using the TBI and the university facilities to expedite our research programs, and we believe that we bring opportunities to the university to collaborate with faculty on projects of mutual benefit. The TBI offers us infrastructure and space, and importantly, access to the departments at the university and the facilities that may not exist at the TBI. And of course, we have the presence of knowledgeable faculty on campus and a well-trained student pool. Our key partners at the University of Hyderabad are the School of Chemistry, the School of Life Sciences, and the School of Management Studies as we work on the science as well as the commercialization aspect of our research. And while we, um, three benefits from being on the university campus, we believe that our presence on campus is also a benefit to U of H. We bring the expertise of drug development and commercialization, enabling translational research, and of course, any successful commercialization of our